Morris Jumal Mansion. One of the oldest houses in Manhattan, this stately Georgian mansion in Washington Heights was built by Roger Morris, a colonel in the British Army in 1765. It served as military headquarters for both sides of the revolution, with George Washington, retreating, here after the disastrous loss of the Battle of Brooklyn in 1776. In 1810, the house was bought by Stephen Jumal and his wife Eliza, and after his suspicious death, she remarried in 1832 to a haunted figure in his own right, Aaron Burr, the former vice president and killer of Alexander Hamilton. Since at least the 1960s, rumors of the supernatural have persisted when a group of rowdy school children allegedly saw the ghostly visage of Eliza Jamal, who told them to quiet down before gliding away. Other sightings include a talking grandfather clock and a Hessian soldier who's been known to emerge from paintings on the wall, Hogwarts style. The Dakota the Dakota is renowned for its featured role in Roman Polanski's 1968 horror classic Rosemary's Baby and as the site of John Lennon's assassination. But the legendary Central Park West building has a long history of supernatural encounters in its own right. Over the years, workers and residents have reported seeing a friendly little girl dressed in turn-of-the-century clothing, an adult with the face of a small boy, and even the ghost of Lennon himself. West 57th Street. In 1922, Albert Champion, a former cyclist and inventor of the spark plug, married showgirl Edna Crawford. The May to September romance quickly soured when Edna took the younger, dashing Frenchman Charles Brazel as a lover. In 1927, Brazel allegedly murdered Champion in a Paris hotel, but Edna and Brazel convinced authorities he died of a weak heart and were set to inherit his fortune with which she and Brazel bought the penthouse at 57 West 57th Street. Brazel was jealous, keeping Edna prisoner of the penthouse and eventually beating her to death with a telephone, after which her bodyguards threw him out the window. The penthouse lay vacant for years, but subsequent owner Carlton Alsop claimed to hear Edna's clicking high heels and the couple's violent arguments, and his guests often reported seeing horrific, unexplainable sights. His wife left him, his dogs had nervous breakdowns, and things got so bad for Alsop that he eventually had himself committed, before abandoning the penthouse forever. Campbell Apartment A few years ago, our friends at Eda reported on the supposed haunting of the Campbell Apartment the lavishly appointed cocktail lounge in Grand Central Terminal, which was once the office and salon of financier John W. Campbell who died in 1957. According to owner Mark Grosick, employees have felt strange presences, including something pushing them from behind and bursts of cold air. And some have even reported seeing an old, fashionably dressed couple sitting and having a cocktail on the balcony when the place was completely closed. Street. Located right around the corner from bustling 6th Avenue, Gay Street is arguably one of the most picturesque blocks in New York, and the quaint brick townhouse at number 12 is no exception. The building served as a speakeasy called the Pirate's Den during Prohibition and was purchased by the corrupt, yet wildly popular, Mayor Jimmy Walker as a home for his mistress, Ziegfeld girl Betty Compton. Neighbors insisted that ghostly flappers and the Gay Street Phantom, a dapper gent in a cloak and top hat, still lurk around late at night, and if that's not creepy enough, the property was later bought by Frank Paris, the creator of notorious hell puppet Howdy Doody. St. Mark's Church in the Bowery 
St. Mark's Crutch in the Bowery is the second oldest church in Manhattan, splitting from Trinity Church in 1799. Built on Dutch colonial governor Peter Stuyvesant's family farm, legend has it that the cantankerous, peg-legged Dutchman still haunts the area. He's been known to harass clergymen and parishioners, ring the bells, and loudly interrupt services by stomping around and singing Calvinist hymns in Dutch. Apparently, English Episcopal hymns simply don't agree with him. The Merchant's House While some haunted houses might attempt to shed their notorious reputations, the East Village Merchant's House Museum all but relishes it. Built in 1832 and later, bought by wealthy merchant C. Barry Treadwell, the museum is an immaculate look into the personal domestic lives of the 19th century cultural elite, but the ghost of Treadwell's daughter, Gertrude a lonely sheltered spinster whose life was supposedly the basis of Henry James Washington Square Park still haunts the place. Washington Square Park The Manhattan Well. In the winter of 1800, the body of a young woman named Guglielma Sands was found at the bottom of the Manhattan Well, at what is now 129 Spring Street. The ensuing trial was one of the great scandals of 19th century New York. With Levi Weeks, brother of influential builder Ezra Weeks, accused of her murder after he reportedly impregnated and promised to marry her, Weeks retained the city's top attorneys and was acquitted. Despite growing public outrage, in 1817, the Manhattan Well was filled in and built over, but it was rediscovered in 1980 and has since become a notorious destination for paranormal enthusiasts claiming that, the ghost of Guglielma Sands still haunts the area. <laughs> 85 West 3rd Street Now part of NYU's Furman Hall, 85 West 3rd Street was once occupied by Edgar Allan Poe for eight months in 1844 and 1845, where he wrote his classic story The Cask of Amontillado and at least part of The Raven. Nowadays, the only part of the original residence that remains is the banister and Poe's ghost has been seen climbing it by spooked law students. Eighty-four West Third Street. Right across the street from 85 West Third is another haunted building, a disused fire station converted into a private residence. The building is apparently haunted by the ghost of firefighter Schwartz, who hanged himself from the rafters after learning of his wife's infidelity in 1930. Over the years, firefighters have reported strange noises coming from the attic, and have even seen his hanging corpse. 's laid law house in Wallabout, an 1840 Greek revival home a stone's throw away from the Brooklyn Navy Yard may hold a sinister secret one December evening in 1878 resident Edward F Smith reported hearing a knock at his door but when he went to answer there was no one to be found of course the knocking persisted while the back doors and windows were violently rattled and banged the unseen tormentor continued harassing Smith until he called the police. While the cops staked out the area, someone, or something, hurled a brick through the dining room window. Despite the fact that multiple officers were standing right outside. The New York Times later reported on the incidents, and 136 Clinton Avenue became something of a hotspot for curious ghost hunters and spiritualists, who held seances on the sidewalk. This prompted Smith to boldly proclaim, they won't get in here, we consider ourselves perfectly able to take care of any ghost that comes along. 